Hello to everyone, my name is T. Tamaro, and in this video I'm excited to introduce you the first comparative book on residential segregation with cases from around the world. The book is entitled Urban Socioeconomic Segregation and Income Inequality, A Global Perspective, and it has been edited together with my good colleagues, Professors Martin Van Ham, Ruta Obarevicene and Helene Janssen. So let us start first from the term segregation itself. Very often a negative meaning has been attached to this word. However, segregation is not necessarily something negative and it can be something that is very natural of how the people are distributed in the cities. For example, people in different life course stages have different values and needs towards housing and places of residence. Young people have certain needs, people with, in the family ages with, with kill, children have different needs, and elderly people have somewhat different needs. However, very often segregation is also related to different structures of inequality in the cities. And this is what is in the focus of this book. The main question that we intended to answer with the case studies from around the world was as follows. Are levels of residential segregation related to levels of income inequality? The book includes 24 cases from all continents of the world. Let us start by looking at the long-term trends in income inequality itself, focusing on both within country and between country trends in inequality. First, what we can see is that within the countries, income inequality decreased till the 1970s, stabilized and started to increase from 1990s. So we see this U-shaped uh, change. And within the last decade, levels of income inequality within the countries have been stable. The trend is different when we look at the between country in income inequality that increased till the end of 1980s and has decreased quite consider considerably thereafter. The data that we use are based on national censuses and they are based on the two last census round, rounds and the rounds that are available at the moment are from 2000 and 2010. In each case study city, we have nine main ISCO categories of occupations, the standard classification, and our focus is on the managers and elementary occupations, or as we say, high income and low income workers. We are using two sets of indicators in our study. First, we are measuring income inequality at the national level and we use Gini index for that. We measure residential segregation with index of dissimilarity and it shows the difference of residential distribution between high and low earning occupations. We also interpret the values of the dissimilarity index as follows. If the value is less than 20, the segregation level is low. If it's more than 40, segregation level is high. And it, when it's between 20 and 39, it's a medium level. Also, the values can interpret it as follows. For example, the value of the dissimilarity index 20 means that 20% of the low-income workers have to move to a different neighborhood in order to achieve a similar distribution across neighborhoods as high-income workers. So let us see what are the main findings and let us walk through step by step by answering first to two subsidiary questions. First, what are the levels of residential segregation between occupational groups. And what we can see from this graph that within the pool of our cities, 
there is nowhere segregation level below the value of 20, meaning that all cities are either medium or highly segregated. The most segregated city in our pool of cities is Cape Town, and the least segregated is Tel Aviv. What we also do see from this graph is a certain distribution across the income level of the countries. Segregation levels tend to be higher in lower income countries, or more specifically middle income countries, and this is based on the World Bank classification, and are lower in the high income countries. The next question we were interested in was what are the changes in segregation over time or between the two last census rounds available or 2000 and 2000 and censuses. The blue bars represent the year 2000 and the brown bars represent the year 2010. And the main message that this graph communicates to us is that the brown bars are taller compared to the blue bars meaning that segregation levels have arisen in most cities included in our book. There are some exceptions. The biggest of them is Cape Town, that used to be the most segregated city in 2000, and there we do witness a significant desegregation by the time of the 2010 census round. However, the main research question that we were interested in was as follows. Are levels of segregation between occupational groups related to levels of income inequality? And we find that indeed income inequality and residential segregation are related. However, we also find that we have to lack income inequality since it takes time before changes in income inequality are translated into changes in residential segregation. Therefore, Gini index in this figure is measured in 1990, and the similarity index is measured in 2000. We also find, again, some correlation between the country's income level. If we look at the upper right corner of the figure, we mainly find medium income countries and cities here. And if we look at the lower left side of the graph, we mainly see cities from the higher income countries. In other words, there is a pattern that segregation levels and inequality levels tend to be higher in medium income countries and lower in higher income countries. There are not much changes when we look at the findings from the 2010 census round. Again, Gini index is lagged and is measured from the year 2000. This means that levels of segregation tend to be quite persistent. However, we also do see some convergence in the trends. In those countries where segregation levels were higher, both inequalities and levels of segregation have reduced, and in these cities the segregation levels were lower, both inequality and segregation have increased. And let us just look at it by moving back and forth in time. So there is some convergence taking place and inequalities and segregation become more similar in our case study cities with time. There are also interesting changes taking place in the spatial distribution of higher income and lower income households. Here on this graph, we have three circles at two time points in 2000 and 2010. The largest circle represents the urban region. The medium sized circle represents the central parts of the city, the inner city, and the smaller circles represent suburban settlements. And what we do see happening over time, and that is quite universal in all cities that we studied, that higher income households cluster both to the central parts of the city, to the inner cities, and to the waterfront, and that is something that we call gentrification. And as house prices and rents rise in these more central areas of the cities, 
lower income households are pushed more and more to the peripheries of the city, to the suburbs, and that is something that we label this suburbanization of poverty. In other words, we see that suburbs especially are becoming more and more segregated with very affluent and uh, less affluent settlements and neighborhoods uh, being located in different parts of there. So the main conclusions from this first comparative study of residential segregation across the world is as follows. First, levels of segregation are lower in higher income countries and higher in middle income countries. There are also important changes taking place in residential segregation, although they are not big. Segregation levels are slow to change, but we also see that there are some convergence between higher income and medium income countries. In higher income countries, both inequality levels and segregation levels have grown, while in medium income countries, both inequalities and segregation levels have somewhat decreased. We also find then residential segregation is related to income inequality, but uh, time lags exist. It takes time before changes in income inequality are translated to changes in residential segregation. The book Urban Socioeconomic Segregation and Income Inequality, a Global Perspective was edited by Professors Marta Manham, Fruta Varevicene, Helene Janssen and me, and it is fully open access. We hope very much that you will enjoy reading it. Thank you so much for watching this video.